the T-shaped pillars are covered in zoomorphic, i.e. animal and creature designs in high relief. Um, and there's even 3D reliefs as well actually protrude, protruding out from various of the pillars as well. And there's a whole variety of creatures represented. Most of them are very fierce creatures, uh, like lions um, and, um, you know, and, and things like arachnids and scorpions and things like that. There's a number of foxes, there's various cranes and various other types of birds, some of which we'll, we'll, we'll be mentioning as we go along. Um, and as I said, most of them are not the sort of animals that you'd want to be kept in a confined space with because they attack basically or bite or scratch or whatever. Uh, and there's certainly an edgy, ele edgy element about you know, these. Now, the other important point to say uh, now is that the general consensus is that this was constructed by hunter-gatherers, as I say, at the end of the last ice age. Um, and to be honest, it's not going to be constructed by anybody else because there was nothing else happening at this time, in theory. Um, this is before the so-called uh, Neolithic Revolution, where agriculture and animal husbandry and the settled lifestyle came into it. So there was only hunter-gatherers around to actually have done the work. But we'll be questioning why they actually did that work as we go along. Now, um, these T-shaped pillars, although they might look like roof supports, uh, uh, some of them, are actually statues. That seems to be the consensus. And you can tell this very easily by the way that you have actually these, these right-angled arms that reach down the sides of the pillars and come round into the front. Obviously, Cube was showing various images of these and other ones in other parts of the world. And obviously, you've got these T-shaped or hammer-shaped heads. Um, and they have no faces on them. That's very interesting because the people, the Quebecli builders, as I call them, uh, knew how to do faces. They knew how to do heads. So quite clearly, they wanted to portray this image that they did not want to show the faces, almost as if there's an ethereal or otherworldly element to what's actually going on here. They've also got collars, um, you can see here this V-shaped here, there are a number of them have got these collars which are obviously the, 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 the force of gravity is pulling something down. At the end of it they've got these emblems of office uh, which are things like bull's heads or um, almost solar disks or lunar disks and things like that. So clearly these people wore pendants of some description. Um, and they've got garments on. Now these garments, are, the archaeologists refer to as like a stole-like thing. You can see it on the left-hand uh, image here. You see these, these vertical lines coming down and ending at the waistline. They say that it's some kind of skull, like a scarf or a stole that a Catholic priest would wear. I don't think they are. I think they are just garments, you know, just like any garment would, would hang naturally and open, you know, in this manner. Um, so, you know, and as I say, they end, at the, they end at the waist where you have belts, and some of them, as we'll see shortly, actually have um, the belts on them. Now, these are the two huge pillars in the centre of one of the enclosures, Enclosure D. And the thing about them, if you look at them, is that they're very... You know, that their presence is, is there. I mean, quite clearly, as you walk into these enclosures, you're meant to walk up and, and come before these huge double pillars in the centre of them. You know, and they obviously represent something. Um, and the archaeologists have suggested, that have written about it so far, suggest that they might be the first gods, you know, as part of some early religion. They might be celestial beings. They might be, um, you know, divine ancestors or something like that. And that's, you know, all of those may well be correct in some manner, but quite clearly there's an otherworldly presence about them. They're, they're obviously not meant to represent, let's say, the king of the local tribe or community or something like that. There, there's, there's something more etheric, um, more to do with otherworldly activity. And this guy here... Um, this guy here is Professor Klaus Schmidt. 
Now he's the guy that we can really thank for, uh, for the discovery of Gobekli Tepe. Um, I mean, he inspected a site which had already been viewed in the 1960s and had been dismissed as a Byzantine cemetery, you know, more than a thousand years old. Um, on a hunch, he went there in 1994 and realised immediately that you were dealing with a very, very important um, early Neolithic site. I mean, there were bits of carvings and things like that on the floor, which he recognised because he'd been working in this region anyway on other early Neolithic sites.